live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour with Rachel Cruz, a production of Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today. We're glad you're here. We're here to answer your life and your money questions. Phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Cecilia is in Atlanta to start off this hour. Hi, Cecilia. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm great. Thanks. Good. How can we help? So I'm interested in whether or not I should leverage uh, equity lines for more property when I've tried to not have debt. And is that safe for investment property activity? Okay. You realize your sentences just ran against each other, right? I mean, (laughs) that's possible. I don't Um, want any debt. Should I go into debt? No. I mean, that was what you just told me. I'm confused. Okay. Okay. Based on there are many, many people buying homes and then getting lines of equity to buy additional homes as investment properties. And then they have this whole domino of their equity lines being leaning on other properties. I I think that you've been spending a lot of time on TikTok, haven't you? No, I'm a realtor, and I, I oh, hear other okay. I hear other people saying this. Yeah. So I did. How long have you been a debt. realtor? Five years. Okay. Um, love it. Um, okay. Good. So Good. I I know that you kind of had a history of being in real estate and that not eventually being good for you. And so I don't know if you're firm on that or if the current real estate has been great to me. Borrowing on real estate about destroyed me. So what I did is I got caught up in the same kind of crap that's floating around out there right now. It was happening in the early 80s, Uh, only it was a different world. Obviously, we didn't have the Internet. Instead, we had these wonderful things called infomercials where some goober is sitting by the surf selling tapes and a $3,000 weekend course on how to buy real estate, nothing down. It was the exact same crap as all over the place right now, uh, especially on TikTok. TikTok's got a real version of it going. Okay, Borrow all you can because real estate's always awesome. You're always going to make money. It's passive income, says the get-rich-quick gurus. Okay, Now, I did that. I started from nothing. I was 22 years old. I got $4 million worth of real estate by the time I was 26, over a million dollar net worth, meaning I owed $3 million on $4 million. That's not a bad equity position at all. I had a lot of short-term notes because I was doing flips before there was Chip and Joanna to tell us how. And um, so I actually did it. I've owned over 2,000 pieces of property in my life, so I'm not inexperienced at this. And uh, the bank got scared and called our notes the second bank got when we were in trouble and called our notes and i had 90 i had 120 days to come up with a million two and it was all in real estate and i had no cash because i believed in leverage because that's what i had been taught by the get rich quick people does that any of that sound familiar um yes and i haven't bought it but i i have clients and i don't want to counsel them incorrectly yeah so I here's probably... the here's the thing so here let me tell you the end of the story and and then i'll tell you my answer and th- so you understand the why to my answer okay in the yeah. story was i went broke spent two and a half years of my life losing everything i owned one year i made two hundred fifty thousand dollars at 27 years old the next year I'm, my taxable income was six thousand dollars i spent the whole year selling everything to keep it from being foreclosed on still some of it got foreclosed on and at the end of the day two and a half years later i was bankrupt because they called her because they were coming to take the baby furniture out of my house and i was done with them okay now that's the end of my story However, the other part of the story was there was a guy named Robert Allen who would have been on TikTok today if he were still a thing. He wrote a book called Nothing Down, and he famously would be dropped into any city without his wallet and buy a house with no identification or credit of any kind within 48 hours. There's a goober out there or two doing that on TikTok right now, modeling after him, okay? And so he would do this. I remember watching him do it in Chicago. He did 48 hours. He bought three houses, nothing down, okay? And he did this. 
His next book was called Creating Wealth. He went all over America starting real estate clubs called Acre. And each of these clubs were to feed him leads to buy more real estate, nothing down. I was in one of those clubs because I was buying nothing down. A bunch of us, there was, ended up being 160 people in our investing club. Later, Robert Allen filed Chapter 11, bankruptcy. The whole thing caught up and took him out too. But anyway... Of the guys, 130 of them or so in that club, uh, now 30 years ago, the number of them that did not, that still own any rental real estate is about six. The rest of them have gone broke. The six that still own it paid it off and got out of debt. They did not get rich doing this crap. No one makes it a decade doing this crap. It's crap. Don't do it. Was that unclear? Very clear. <laughs> you walked into it, didn't you, Cecilia? <laughs> no, Cecilia, you're the person to answer this question. I'm curious, I'm what honored. is driving you toward this? Are you doing, are you not great financially? No, I, I took a little course called Financial Freedom, Financial uh, Peace University, and I got debt free, paid off my mortgage, paid off my children's student loans with my husband. No, but um, what's what's making you that just all the people doing itch. it that are wanting you to do this? Uh, no, I'm I'm trying. Uh, I have very much ignored all the, the all that clamor. Um, so I, I did want to diversify my portfolio. Until you asked that. me a question about leveraging lines of credit to go buy real estate, you ignored it. Well, I'm, 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 that's why I'm talking to you is because I haven't done anything foolish. I know, I know, I'm but I'm just plan, saying. Don't plan on it. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, who, who, what was it that made you think that that was even a good idea? That's what George is asking. Well, I, I guess my question was, had something changed in the world financial picture that all of a sudden? No, nothing changes. This is a, this is a way to get around stuff. You know, my, yeah. my dad lived some of what you're talking about as well. He bought, you know, land he couldn't afford and um, ho helped to hold on to it thinking it's going to turn around and I'm going to make mm -hmm. gazoodles on it because a, a builder's going to want it. Mm -hmm. And 20 years later, that had not yet happened. He died before he saw yeah. any of that happen. So I will um, tell you the other part of the end of the story, the, the end of the end of the end of the story. Um, I, after I went broke, we started uh, saving money and investing. And I used some of that money to buy a piece of real estate cash. And they, then I used some of that income to buy another piece of real estate cash. And then in 2008, when everything dove down, I had a big pile of cash and I bought a bunch of stuff for 15 cents on the dollar. Today, I own probably $450, $500 million worth of real estate. It's all paid for. And I never borrowed a dime on any of it. They ain't taking this one. This one's mine. Me and God, we're managing this. No bankers involved. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save 45% off selected products. Visit Blinds.com today for more info.
George Kemmel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. You do not have to learn all of life's lessons the hard way. You can choose to watch other people be idiots and not do what they did. So I could be the sample idiot that doesn't have to, so you don't have to go buy a bunch of nothing down real estate. And then George can live a proper life and, you know, buy his first house very conservatively, sell it, buy another house, pay it off, and uh, buy 32, be a millionaire with zero debt and never have, you don't have to, you don't have to go through drug rehab to have a testimony to decide to not do drugs. It's That's possible. So true. Me? I have to do everything the hard way, but you guys can learn from me because I have a PhD in DUMB. And you did it very publicly, Dave. Most people do it in private. You chose to broadcast it to millions. Oh, it's worse than that. I made it into a brand. I made my stupidity into a brand. Is that the guy who filed for bankruptcy and now he's a guy that files for bankruptcy and tells people how to get out of debt? What kind of dumb butt is that? Well, one that knows the track record, but knows what it's like. You know what I mean? One that's touched the hot stove and trying to warn others. Yeah, I can just, you know. I can, you don't have to teach, get, grab your kid's hand, put it Mm. up there, you know, you can just don't, don't touch it. I did it once. It's not good for you. Well, I think the heart of it is people are feeling desperate with the economy and inflation. I'll never build wealth. And so they start taking shortcuts and fear, greed, and pride kick in a little bit. Mm. And all of a sudden they make some risky decisions and the risk meter gets broken or they put it aside and decide I'm going to be the exception to the rule. I know what Dave says, but I saw it work out on a guy on TikTok. So therefore it's going to work out for me. It's, um, I saw a guy the other day said his, his, uh, 11 year old had a, um, oh God, he had this whole thing that was completely illegal built out. I mean, oh, wow. well, I mean, he was, he was funding Roth IRAs and they didn't have any earned income. Oh, I've seen this one. Yeah. And it's um, some kind of like tax hack and you can give your kids yeah, income. My and- kid, my, my four year old works for me full time and I pay them $60,000 a year and they're. And I'm funding, uh, that's illegal. The IRS is about to be on your butt. Yeah, when you get audited, you will have like the capital L on your forehead thing that says loser. Yeah, that's what will happen. Oh, my God, you people. So, no, you, you, hit, you hit it, though. It's the trifecta. Uh, and I have done all three, uh, and all three will make you broke. Greed, fear, and pride. See, pride is I buy a car to impress someone at a stoplight that I will never meet. It's like a Christmas vacation, good-looking girl uh, waving at Chevy Chase, and he wrecks his whole family's car, right? It's that. That's your deal. You remember that scene? Oh, that's yeah. such a great scene. It's a classic scene. Was it Christy Brinkley? I think so. I think so, yeah. I rewatched it recently. Cla- yeah, the, the audience has given me a, a, a nod, so that, I, I, Trivial Pursuit's got it. Okay. The, uh, uh, the, and so th- that's pride. You know, and I've done that one. When you buy crap, and Rachel's thing she posted, and you've ta- you wrote about it in your new book that we haven't. Oh, we haven't told anybody Ooh, about that yet. Secret. I, I just finished the mas- the manuscript last weekend. It's really good. But the uh, she talked about it, and she said, if, "Would I buy this if no one ever saw it?" Oh yeah. That's your test on the pride button, right? It's a gut check. Now, the word the greed. Greed is not like. <laughs> It's not like, you know, Simon Legree and Scrooge you know, McDuck. Scrooge McDuck and I'm stacking coins in the cave. <laughs> That's not greed. Greed is I'm just money motivated to the exclusion of other things that are healthy. You can have a money motivation and not and not being excluded to the exclusion of other things. But if your only if your only button to push is money, that's greed. And you're always going to step in the do when you do that. And the third one I love you said is desperate. That's the worst one. God, that one right there. Man, I the other two, I got over the other two by the time I was like 27, 28 years old. That, that desperate one, that will really come. That's when people, you know, I'm going to take the trip to Vegas and I'll hit and that'll save my business. That's, you know, when you get desperate, just about 20 seconds later after I get desperate, I get stupid. And right after I get stupid, I get broke. Right? I mean, it's, it's crazy it's a, like how that it's a progressive works. causal thing. And desperate leads to stupid leads to broke. When you go, oh, I've got, it's the only way. It's my only. You're about to screw up. When you get in, your drama queen gets to kicking in. You're about to screw up. But they heard that one story of that guy who went to Vegas 
and it was all on the line, and he did it, and he doubled his money and saved the world. And saved the business, yeah. Oh, I've read a couple of business books where the guy says, you know, if I was down, I couldn't make payroll on Friday, so I went to Vegas on Wednesday, and I made payroll, and now I'm such and such. I've heard that. I don't know if they're true, but, I, you know. They I, make I, for a great read. Let me just tell you, it's not a good business. It's not business practice. It's not life practice. It's not a life hack. It's just straight up stupidity that somebody got away with, you know. Well, somebody's got to win. The house wins, brother. The house wins. Look at the size, look at the quality of their furniture and light fixtures. Better than yours, okay? The house wins. They have more lights and dinghies than you do. There's a reason. They took your money, and they mm -hmm. took fools like your money before you got there. That's how That's they right. got that. The house wins. Sports betting is hilarious. People that don't understand statistics, sports bet. They have, have you never had a class in statistics? If you took a class in statistics, you'd understand where the bookie wins. You'd understand why people want to. But there's the how pie. they pay for Duber with the gold necklace. The, was it Caesars? Oh, yeah. The Caesars commercials. That guy, man. How, how do you pay that guy and you pay all that production? And you know what their, what their budget is? For, a bajillion dollars. For Caesars, for sports betting. And y where do they get the money for that? You, America. Oh, hello. It you thinking you. you're going to get on FanDuel and That's, MGM Sports yeah, and make 20 you know, bucks. FanDuel is not about fans dueling. It's about you losing. Mm. You're at FanDuel making bank. That's serious money. And it's all off of you because they understand statistics. Hello. <sighs> Probability. Probability of a win, and and you don't beat the odds after you play a while. You occasionally do, and that's what keeps the fools coming back, just like my golf game. There you go. All right, open phones here at 888 825 -5225. One good shot out of 72, and you keep playing the same stupid game over and over. That felt personal. That's it. That, that was personal. It's just there's too much authenticity in this segment. All right, Jim is in Tulsa. Hey, Jim, how are you? I am doing good. Nice to talk to you. You too. How can we help? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a what would Dave do in my shoes? Uh, at age 62, I have uh, been divorced four years and four months. Pretty much a divorce that just basically left me pretty much on the street, homeless. Uh, I've been living with a family member in a one-room house, uh, or one room in a house. And um, I have been basically getting on your plan since then. I'm having to pay child support, alimony, and trying to get my life back in order and have been on your plan um, pretty much intense up until uh, just last week. Uh, I have uh, accumulated uh, quite a bit of wealth, and I'm just trying to get an idea and moving into a, a whoa, place whoa, 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 whoa! You drove by being on the street to accumulated wealth like nothing just happened. What happened? Okay. Well, in, in tense, I uh, been saving. Basically, my budget plan since I've been living, you know, since divorce uh, has been basically spending one dollar for every two dollars I save. And at this point, on closing last Friday, I was worth one point one five eight million. You did and that in four years can't. from the street. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why are you still living in the relative's house in one bed, in one room? That's a well, little that's strange. That's my question to you. Yes, it is strange, but I'm just trying to get back on my feet. And I think I you're think back on your feet. You think I'm ready? You're a millionaire. I think uh -huh. you're back on your feet. I, I don't know if you're emotionally okay. back on your feet, but I think you're financially back on your feet. There it is. Sounds like you got run over by a truck emotionally. I'm sorry. It's obvious you were hurt really, really bad, and you're still reeling from that, and it still took some of your confidence. Um, it sounds like you've done an incredible job with the money piece of this. So I'd go buy me a little house, man. I think it's time. This is The Ramsey Show.
Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. George, George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Y'all should be here at the breaks. They're more entertaining than the show. All right. The stuff you don't get to hear. Yeah. Brittany is with us in St. Louis. Hey, Brittany, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? So I just paid off $9,000 worth of credit card debt. Woo. And I have, I'm credit card debt free now. And um, I have downloaded your Every Dollar Budgeting app. I'm trying a new way and trying to get, like, on a complete full budget, not just, like, knowing what's in my account and stuff. And I bought the premium version of your app, and I'm kind of wondering, because I'm trying to get out of living paycheck to paycheck, and I've accounted for everything that I put into savings and then all of my bills and then my last debt, which is my car, Um I have accounted for all of that and like groceries and all of that, but where do you put, because it's a zero-based budget, so where do you put the money that you don't plan to spend at all, like the buffer that's in your checking account that you roll over like every week or every month? So you're saying you went under in some categories on your budget, giving you extra than you planned for? Basically, yes. So you didn't spend every dollar? Or yeah. you're saying, or you're saying, the money that you're setting aside in a sinking fund. What do you do with that? I, I'm, so, how much money did you start your month with on this budget? It's about thirty-eight hundred. Okay. Does every one of the thirty-eight hundred dollars have a name? No, I'm, okay. I have like about two hundred dollars left. There that, we go. Like I said, uh, okay. I really... That's what I was after. So, okay. if you got money left while you're still creating the budget, that's going to go toward your next baby step, which for you is this car debt, right? Right. Yep. It sounds like it yep. does have an assignment. If you got two hundred dollars left at the end of the budget, that you're going to go back to your car debt and add two hundred dollars extra payment. Okay. Any money you All can right. squeeze out of your budget goes on your debt snowball until you're done with baby step two. And that two hundred okay. is what you squeezed out of your budget by managing well. You are cool. How does it feel to be large and in charge? I'm excited. Yeah, I want to be weird. I don't want to be normal anymore. Tell people what it feels like, Brittany, because I know we were messaging on Instagram. I said, hey, call the show so we can dig into the details. But how does it feel to actually pay attention to your money and plan for it instead of just see where it went with one of these tracking apps that are out there? Does it give you peace and confidence for the future? It does, yes. I mean, because I am, I came from a life of just like not even knowing where it all went at all. Like not even, I literally came from not even writing anything down in a register to like basically to your app. So <laughs> this so is kind of new for me. And the yeah. other side um, of this, yeah. if you, let's say you, you budgeted 150 bucks for groceries, you spent 120 And so you got 30 bucks left over that might be sitting in your checking account and you can then roll that over to the debt. And attack it even more if you can, you know. If any of your budget items come in under at the end of the month, that should give you the extra cash. Agreed? Yes. That's what George is saying. Throw that at the debt, too. But right now, we know there's 200 and something. Now, 
in addition to that separate subject, not the 3,800, but just keep a running balance in your checking account. That's different. This is your every dollar is not your checking account. Every dollar is what you're doing with this month's income. Okay. Okay. That's a difference because you could you could keep two hundred dollars in your checking account, but that doesn't or eight hundred dollars in your checking account or four dollars in your checking account, but that doesn't enter into the thirty eight hundred discussion. If you let's say you started the month with two hundred and seven dollars in your checking account, okay, and you mm-hmm. had thirty eight hundred dollars come in and thirty eight hundred dollars go out, but with your every dollar budget then that means you would have still have $207 left in your checking account. So you can keep a pad, a little pad in there, and you should actually end the checking account. Does that make sense to you? Right. Yeah, because that's what I was wondering. You know, like when the debt, when the car is paid off eventually, you know, and you don't, I don't have any more payments. Then what will be your next baby step? Do you remember? The emergency fund. We're going to add to the one thousand dollar account till it's up to three to six months of expenses. So, how much is your car payment? It's four fifty two. Okay, and if you had a month like this month, you have six fifty two going against the car, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you put six fifty two in your baby step three, and your your one thousand became sixteen fifty two, and then the next month it's uh, twenty three hundred and four. Follow me. Assuming yeah. the numbers stayed exactly the same, which they never do exactly the same, but right. but um, but I mean, whatever you squeeze, you can get out of this uh, out of this. You put the squeeze on the baby step. That's what George was saying, and that's the beauty of the Every Dollar app because now you're telling your money what to do instead of wondering where it went. How old are you? I'm thirty. Oh, you are going to be so rich. <laughs> what do you make? I make about fifty grand a, re- a year right now, but I just got a promotion at my job, and it will probably start after the first of the year, and I don't know what my compensation is going to be yet for that. But more. That is awesome. It's only going to accelerate your baby steps. Yeah. And, and Brittany, go to everydollar.com slash budgeting. Our friend Rachel Cruz is doing a free webinar uh, three days from now, August 24th. So tune in for that. Make sure you sign up. And all of you listening, go check that out. Rachel's going to walk you through how to set up an every dollar budget. And it's not going to be boring because it's Rachel. Uh-huh. She makes everything fun. <laughs> you may not know what happened, but you'll be laughing. No, I mean, it'll, you'll know what happened. It's great. And uh, she, uh, But she's going to cover the irregular income. And the uh, also how the baby steps work with every dollar. A little That's bit, a little bit of what we were talking about just now, but probably in a whole lot more detail in this webinar. It's all free, by the way. So where'd you say we go? Everydollar.com slash budgeting. Okay, and Is that's to sign up for Rachel's free webinar. I was trying to remember what it was, and I was looking around. I know it's written around down here somewhere, but I knew you would know it. I'll, so there you go. I love a good link. Yeah, and you're going to be doing some of those after the baby comes, right? That's right. In September, I'll be doing right. a few of these. So right. I can't beat Rachel, but if you want me, you know, you can settle. Uh, you'll get the uh, – listen, Rachel's funny. George has got the snark. You don't want to miss the snark. If that's your speed, I'm when, your guy. When we have snark and budgeting together, we have a masterpiece. You're going to love it. Wow. You're going to love it. Quite Jason is in Boston. Hey, Jason, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Millennial snark. Hello. Thank- hey, what's <laughs> up, man? Thank you very much. Nice to, uh, thanks for taking the call. Sure. Um, so my question is, I am saving for a house right now. And I have some other debts that I believe are healthy debts that, I'm wondering if I should pay off before, you know, saving and, and saving up money for the house. Um, to elaborate on that a little bit, just some things here. Um, right now, I am saving 25% of every paycheck. Into, How much other debt do you have? So the debt that I have is I owe $36,000 on my car, and then I have a mortgage for a condominium that comes to about 900 Now, the mortgage, um, I'm not living there. I'm renting that out, um, and, you know, the, the tenant lives there, and, you know, that was my first little property. Now I'm living with my fiancé in her condo. And my car payment is seven seventy five a month. However, the 
interest rate on that is 1.99. And as far as finances go, I have about a solid three months of living expenses uh, in my what, what, bank account. What do you make? Uh, my salary from my job is $100,000 a year. And then I, I do make... Um, uh, rental income from my condo. Yeah, and how old are you? I am 37. Okay. I'll tell you what, when you come back from this break, we will um, uh, tell you what we, we would do in your situation, which is basically nothing you're doing. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, Dr. John Deloney here. I'm a huge fan of both meditation and prayer. And good mental health includes slowing down, gaining control of your thoughts, and plugging into something bigger than you. And Hallow makes it easy to start a daily practice of meditation, prayer, and finding peace. Hallow is the number one Bible app in the world, and you can tailor content towards your faith tradition. From scripture readings and prayers to meditation and journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice prayer, meditate, and build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life and rediscover true peace. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today to get three months of Hallow for free. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Jason is with us in Boston. He and his fiance are saving up for another house. He's got a condo worth about 900k that he rents out. $775 car payment at one point whatever percent uh, makes 100k. And uh, was wondering about uh, whether you got to pay off the car or not, or be saving for a house. And that's about how far we got in the discussion. Is that a fair summary of what you told me, sir? Yeah, that's a fair summary. Okay, George. The condo is not worth nine hundred k though. The condo, it's a small condo. Oh, oh you I'm said sorry. You were paying nine hundred a month on the mortgage. Correct. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. What's the condo worth? The condo I bought it for one fifty, and it's currently worth two thirty. What do you owe on it? One twenty one. Okay, that's what I'm after. Okay, cool. cool. I misunderstood. I apologize. Okay. And your goal now no is to get a primary residence. That is correct. For you guys to live in. You have any cash? Do I have any cash? Yes. In my bank, I have three months of emergency savings, and then I keep one month of operating expenses in my checking. How much is that, all that together? Um, it's about 18000 in my savings, and it is about six in my checking account. Okay. We'll call it twenty four. Okay. Now, in addition to that money... I have $25,000 saved up for the down payment of a house. Mm -hmm. And what's the balance owed on the car? $36,000. You told me that earlier. Okay. All right. Good. So you have the cash to pay this car off, but you told us at the beginning of the call that you want to keep it around because it's a healthy debt? I, you know, the, the interest is 1.99%, and I feel like, I am making a lot more than that on, you know, wherever I'm investing this $25,000. So you, well you, as, you have $36,000 know, at 1.99, right? Yeah. And the, so two, we'll call it. And you, your 25000 is sitting at what interest rate? Um, anywhere from 6 to 11. Your cash is sitting at 6 to 11? Yeah, right now, um, 
Yes, that is correct. Where? 6 to 11. So um, I use a credit union that's giving me a fantastic interest rate. Is this a CD um, or something? You're not no, getting, you're not not getting anywhere near it, close to 11 on that 25, dude. You're talking about something no, that no, laddered up. You got like $1,000 no, no. at 11, and then it bounces up from there. Maybe my numbers are wrong, but yeah. like, so for example, in they my are. bank, in my bank, the, the twenty. Let's, let's call let's call it five percent. Can we? Okay. That's okay. Safe. So five over two is a three spread. Three percent okay. of thirty six thousand dollars. Right. This is what you're making. Yes. Have you actually done the math on that? No. Okay. It's a thousand bucks. It's a thousand dollars. Okay. So you're not getting rich. Right. Also, this, you is, this, is, not, this is not some big, sophisticated Wall Street play. You're, you're parlaying no, no, right. a credit union savings account against a car loan, and you made a whole $1,000. You didn't make nothing. But what about the money that is I'm that I'm saving for the house that twenty five thousand dollars, which is not included in these numbers that we talked about? That money is being. I know, invested. but your premise is, is that your debt was good debt because you were making so much money on it, and I'm saying that's laughable. A thousand dollars is a yeah. joke. You make a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's not laughable. That's a real income. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're burning a lot of brain calories to make a grand. I agree. Okay, that's what I'm saying. And by the way, the only way to make that spread is if you had thirty six grand in savings, which you don't. And so, so it's actually less than that. You're you're new to this, and you kind of walked into this, and we're abusing you. But I'm but I'm trying to make the point uh, just as lovingly as I can. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, if I woke up in your shoes, having done all the stupid butt things I've done in my life, Jason, which, by the way, everything you've done is brilliant compared to some of the stupid butt stuff I've done. So that's how I learned all of this was from experience, having done stuff the wrong way. If I yeah. woke up in your shoes, I, I, my son is close to your age, and he came in, he sat down and said, Dad, this is my situation. Based on what you know about money and based on the fact that tens of millions of people come to you for advice on how to handle money, what would you tell me to do? If you were my son, here's what I would tell you to do. Sell your condo, pay off your car today, use all the money you can scrape together after that above your emergency fund as your down payment on your new home, and get married as soon as possible. That's what the okay. old man. That's what the old man would tell you, and he just did. Okay. And you hear where that, that com point. where that comes from is your largest wealth building tool is your income. It's and you've been trying to find an angle on this car. You're trying to find an angle on this uh, condo, and and you're trying to figure out a way that all this stuff is smart. You make really good money combined with your new spouse. You're going to make really good money. If the two of you will lean into that wonderful income and quit giving it to banks, you're going to turn into a lot of money. That's where we. That's what we want for you, Jason. And so every time we answer a question on this show, it's because we love you guys and we want you to win. And we're going to get right up in your grill because we love you. And let me show you the math on that, Jason, just to show you what your life could be. And it's going to be a lot more peaceful and a lot less complicated. You sell that condo, you're probably going to walk away with about a hundred grand. You take all the cash you have and you pay off the car today. That's going to still leave you with seven grand. And so he had, he had twenty-five and twenty-four. Twenty-five and eight. He said he had eighteen in his emergency fund and, and twenty-five. Had, and then he had another twenty-five. He had fifty. Oh, so you're going to even more cash than that. Fifty cash plus the condo. Now you have a Minus fully funded car. emergency fund, no condo to worry about, and you have a down payment for your first primary residence, and it's going to be a whole lot more than you got today. Yeah, it's going to be close to a hundred grand. And you yeah. can be back to investing in real estate later on down the road with what cash. Do with cash. With cash. But um, the 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 thing you that people do is, and here, here's what I want everybody else out there to listen to. Here's what we just did, and I had to learn to do this because I'm a math nerd. Math nerds do what Jason did, and I used to do it all the time. Okay, I'm making. I'm only paying one point nine nine, and I'm making five to eleven. Okay, that's great until you actually multiply it by the number of actual dollars. And then it becomes like you can buy a Happy Meal, right? And, and so all of your 
sophisticated gyrations end up being a mathematical joke because what nerds do is we look at the spreads and do all the stuff and we, n- we never fail to look we, we always fail to go all the way to the end result and the end result is not much money for all this gyration and when you actually do the actual dollars coming out of all your bull crap techniques that somebody taught you on tiktok or whatever then you know when you actually run the actual dollars out and then you factor in risk You've not, you know, it's dumb. It ends up just being dumb. Well, and that car is a depreciating asset. Yeah. And so it's going down in value as you hang around that thirty-six grand in debt. And yeah. so that makes it even more laughable as a healthy debt. And here, so. here's the other thing that backs this up. The, when we studied 10,167 millionaires, the number of millionaires that we interviewed that said, you know, I borrowed money on my car at a low interest rate and I put it into my credit union in a CD. And that's how I became a millionaire. The number of them that answered the question, how did you become a millionaire using that technique was precise out of 10,167. The number that did it that way was precisely zero. None of them did that. The number of them that became wealthy by leasing their cars, none of them did that. The number of them that used a whole life life insurance policy to build wealth, precisely zero. None of them said, I got rich and it was freaking whole life. That's what did it. Not one of them said that. They all expressed regret about cars and rip off financial products as being the things that held them back. They would have been millionaires sooner. Mm -hmm. And going into debt and credit cards and going on a trip they couldn't afford. When we asked them about their financial mistakes, they always outlined the things that regular people do all the time and strut around and act like they got airline miles on my card. Precisely the number of millionaires that we met that said, Dave, you know, I made it all with my airline miles. Precisely zero. So the data from actual millionaires, not your broke freaking frat brother, tells you otherwise. Hey, George Camel here. If you love the show and you want a deeper dive on your money journey, we've got a weekly newsletter that gives you helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for the newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour, and host of the George Camel Big Time Hit on YouTube. The George Camel Show. That's Camel with a K. He's a Ramsey personality, and he's going to be answering your financial questions along with me this hour. The phone number is 888-825-5225. We'll answer your life questions as well. It's what we do here. Tom is in Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hello, Dave. Hey, what's up? So this is my question. Uh, I'm 70 years old, and I'm thinking about buying a piece of farm property to leave to my daughter's grandkids when they get older and i was wondering if you thought that was a good idea or not you gonna pay cash for it yeah mm-hmm. you got plenty of money well we're worth about five and a half to six million and we made it the old-fashioned way we worked hard for it just like you what'd you do everybody. what were you doing for a living well the most i ever made in my life uh was about fifty five thousand a year Doing what? And it's doing about the same thing. And we're both retired now. And what did you do for a living? What was your career? Uh, basically a handyman. Did that my whole life. And, and just saving money at $55,000 a year got you $6 bucks. Yep. And it was, it was even more than that before 2008. It, that wiped out about, I think, about $2.5 It took 10, 11 years to recoup that back again. But So you got a lot in real estate. I, I don't have any real estate except for the home that we're living in, 
that's paid off. And so, what did you do? Account. Did you invest it all into uh, retirement accounts? IRA. Yeah, in fr- uh, okay. fidelity. How much is the land? My house right now? No, no, the land you want to buy. You say it's a half million. Well, that's a good question. With that net worth, how much you think I should afford to spend? Because my financial guy told me we would never run out of money if we went to a nursing home home for both of us. We should be able to live to be like 99 or something in those and still not run out of that money. So I'm thinking if the market does take a correction here, wouldn't it be wise to have something in like some farmland and lease it to a farmer and he's paying rent on the property and making enough to pay the taxes on it? Yeah. Uh, f- farmland as, as, an, as an ROI uh, in terms of, you know, it's, it's an alligator. It eats money. It doesn't make money. Um, you know, you can't lease it to a farmer enough to justify the investment. Uh, you, if you were going to do that, you'd buy income producing property, um, you know, as far as an investment goes, but you're wanting something, uh, because you just like some dirt and you want to leave some dirt to your kids and grandkids. And I don't have a problem with that. So what are you thinking about spending on this dirt? Well, maybe, um, million two or million like a hundred acres and right now it's going for about ten thousand an acre mm-hmm. could go higher if you go to the higher mm-hmm. price land it's basically a big flat piece of land mm-hmm. with no hills so i'm looking at southeast ohio so you actually going, want you want some hills right i want some hills but yeah. i don't want it all in woods either because that doesn't grow anything except trees yeah i don't think and you're they, buying they, this for what it grows You're buying this for what it'll go up in value over time and for the enjoyment of going to the family farm. Right. Okay. Yeah, I bought a piece of farmland in 08 when everything went down um, that I got a really nice deal on, and I've added a few acres to it uh, from neighbors over the years, and uh, it makes me absolutely no money every year. But I have a really good time going out there and shooting and hanging out with the grandkids, and they play in the creek and... And we went out there this winter and took, dragged them up the hill in the four-wheeler, and they rode down in the sleds. And, you know, so really important stuff that made absolutely no money, right? So, that, but yeah. that, so my point is this is kind of a family toy. But you can yep. afford a family toy of a half a million when you got six million or 700,000 if you got six million. But I really wouldn't. I don't think you need to justify it with what you're what you're going to make on it because you're not going to make anything on it in your lifetime. They're going to turn around and sell it, and double their money someday, double your money someday, but or triple it. But but you know you're not you're not going to see it. No, I just kind of like to maybe go out on weekends and bush hog or something like that. And yeah, it's real therapeutic. I went and cut down a whole bunch of crap the other day with my bush hog. It's really therapeutic. It just destroys everything. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I guess Tom, I look at it this trying. way. I want you. I want you to go do it. I just. It's. A, but I don't want you to justify it. I want you to justify it because if you took a half a million dollars and set it in the middle of your floor and, and set it on fire, your life is not going to change. So right. you can afford a half million dollar toy. Yeah, well, I love. I love the way you tell people no nonsense. You know, just r- right as it is, and I've never wasted money on going to. A lot of restaurants. I, I do my own changes. You haven't wasted any money on anything. You're amazing. I mean, it's pretty freaking incredible. I think you ought to enjoy it. Time to spend some of it. But yeah. think about it this way. You spend half a million, that still leaves you with four and a half, five million. Can you live off that? Ten million. You know, you'll be okay. In, in seven years, it'll all double anyway. I don't think you're going to spend much of it beyond that. Yeah. So I think you're doing this for a, a great reason, and I'm How excited. How old are your grandbabies? Uh, they're no, well, they're eighteen months right now. So I figure in another fourteen or fifteen years, I might not be around by then. But if I am, that's what we did when yeah, we were young. Yeah, but another two or three years, they can help you drive a tractor with a bush hog on it. Well, they're driving these little electric cars around. I know, but they're eighteen months. I mean, we're not putting them on a tractor right now. But I mean, this is it's good for them. I mean, it may, you know, they have that memory of riding with it. I was out there digging with the skid steer, digging up holes the other day with oh, my three year old in my lap. Yeah, and um, you know. So I, he may not remember anything else, but I remember Papa Dave and digging a hole. Well, I, I'm pretty sure Charles, Rachel, he's already he, obsessed he had with trucks. absolutely no other talents, but Papa That's Dave it. could dig a mean hole. <laughs> That's something. I remember nothing else about the old man, but he was a hole digging fool. That's a talent. 
<laughs> you know, people pay good money to have big holes dug, Dave. You might have a second career if this doesn't work out. You never know. Bush hogging and hole digging. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> they don't call him Dave Bush Hog Ramsey for nothing around these parts. <laughs> oh, it's too fun. Hey, I, I got memories like that of my grandpa, you know, and uh, the first time I got to, uh, and I was a city kid. I mean, I grew up in the suburbs, but getting to go to his farm and driving his tractor and I'm 10, 11 years old, and he let me go out driving out through the middle of the field. I guess there That's wasn't anything fun. out there I could hurt, but I'm just Except turning yourself. It, you know, there you go. Except myself, yeah. The seatbelt probably wasn't working. I doubt the airbag was working, but what do I know, you know? And they, I didn't wear a helmet either, so there's a lot wow. of shocking things in there's this story. There's laws but, nowadays. Know. I don't think you could get away with that today. Yeah. I probably got a callus, too, doing it. You never know. It could have happened. It made you the know. man you are. Yeah, you never know. Made him Dave Bush Hog Ramsey. <laughs> You're amazing, Tom. Six million bucks, making 55,000 bucks as a handyman. Don't you people tell me it can't be done. Oh, and he didn't inherit it, you stupid anarchists. This is The Ramsey Show. Guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Question of the day comes from is sponsored by Neighborly. Your ho- hub for home services is your to-do list too long? Whether it's a simple repair or a whole list of home improvements, Mister Handyman's experienced professionals are here to make your home work for you. Visit Neighborly.com to find expert home service providers, including a locally operated Mister Handyman near you. Today's question comes from Kyle in Utah. He writes. I know you recommend paying for things with cash or a debit card, but how do you feel about digital payment options like Apple Pay, Zelle, and Venmo? It's easy for me to just pay with my phone, but it almost feels like play money at this point. Should I stay with what's convenient but a little harder for me to track with digital payment, or what's more cumbersome and takes more time to deal with, with pulling our cash and splitting everything up? Feels like I can't win either way. Ah, the classic millennial problem, Dave. Stuck between a rock and a digital hard place here. (laughs) This is difficult. (laughs) But this is true. I've been seeing these videos where people feel like when it's digital or it's on a gift card, there's so many ways they don't feel the pain at purchase. And so I love that he's asking this question because he's recognizing this. He's self-aware that this is a problem for him. But he's saying, you know, with digital payments, I do see that it's easier to spend. It's even more frictionless. I mean, Apple Pay's tagline is cashless made effortless. They know that they'll get you to spend more. If you can just double tap on your phone and hold it near a reader, you don't even need to pull the card out anymore. So that's pretty wild. And I know we're seeing higher levels of buy now, pay later and all these debt issues. But when it comes to digital payments, here's my take. If you are doing a zero-based budget and you are aware of what you're spending and you've allocated all of that, it's okay if you do Apple Pay instead of pulling out your debit card. But what he's saying is he knows that he's spending more and he feels it less. Yeah. And, you know, the MIT study that's classic is that when you spend actual cash, like $100 bills, with like, you know, 
president's faces on it and stuff, right? When you lay that down on the table and the cashier picks it up and they hand you your item, that it activates the pain centers of your brain. Your brain says, oh, crap, I don't have that money anymore. When you use a digital transaction, even a debit card, your brain does not activate. It doesn't, it doesn't show that. The pain centers are not activated, meaning that you're not emotionally registering the fact that you're spending money. Consequently, uh, you spend more, the less friction there is. Now, all marketers know this. Every one of us that have a web store, any one, of any sophistication anyway, we are constantly measuring anything that causes you any kind of problem. I, anytime we make you click one more time, we lose a bunch of you. And you don't close the sale. You abandon the cart. And uh, we have to make it super easy. The easier we make it, the more of our stuff you buy. All of us that have a web store know that. And so the ultimate example, of course, is, as you said, I think the, the newest ultimate example, before this, it was Amazon Prime. Because you can just, you know, you just push a little yellow button that's very, the, even the color has been tested. We've tested different colors on submit, on, on an order. And different colors cause you to buy more. Oh, if it's green button, if it's a red button, it's, and, a yellow and, and button. And with different products, it's not the same color even. Wow. Sometimes it's a different color with a different product. But that's how detail we get into your mind. How quick, easy are we making it on your emotions to where you just don't feel the knife as it goes in, right? <laughs> you know, that, that's, what mar- this is what, that's how marketers are doing it, okay? This is what, how it really works in the digital world. So Amazon Prime, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to enter your card number. You don't have to enter any shipping information. You don't have to click here to use same billing information as my uh, shipping information. You don't have to disavow one of your children. You don't have to do anything, you just push a button and crap shows up on your porch. That's the ultimate in low friction until the Apple store. Mm. Now you walk in, grab something. Walk out. Walk out. It's almost like shoplifting. But the Apple phone knows you were there and registers your purchase. You don't even have to go. To, you don't have to stand in line at the register. There is no registering that anything occurred. There it is. In your brain. And so that's the ultimate in low friction. I mean, it feels illegal almost in terms of I'm just walked in here, took something and walked out of the store. I expect something to go beeping and mall cup you the cop tackled. to ride up on his unicycle and not tackle me. You're you know, I mean, I'm I figure something, you know, it's just feel doesn't it? I mean, oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I did this at the Amazon store in Seattle. They have one. It's a grocery store convenience store. Yeah. Where you just is it Amazon? Out. Does Apple have one too, or is it just Amazon? Apple now has one. Where I thought, you, I thought there's one of each. Yeah. You just walk out. Amazon and has them, knows. and Apple has them both. It's amazing how that works. And so, yes, if this is a problem for you, you said it feels like play money. That's a red flag to me. That goes. We've got to figure out how to get a hold of this before we start moving to these more frictionless payment options. I'll give you a suggestion. We've done this during Financial Peace University for thirty years. When you first start your new life of controlling your money. Make it difficult. Only add the convenience after you've reset your habit patterns. Where you've, If you've lived on a budget for 9 or 10 or 20 months successfully, and then you want to add Apple Pay back. And I did this, for instance, when we, when we first started this a long time ago, you, they didn't have pay at the pump. Oh, you had to go inside. You had to go inside. Yeah. And, um, and, and pay inside. Now, they would turn it on. Because in those days they trusted you, you know. But they, you, you know. And here's what's interesting: the amount of uproar over gas prices went down after pay at the pump. Gas prices can go to five dollars a gallon. Oh, people no don't think anything about in. it because they just neat, neat, and stick the card in, pump the gas up. Uh, well, that looked like a lot of money. Oh well, and drive off. But if you have to walk inside, like you're walking to the gallows. Right? It is You're, frightening when I You know, you have it. to walk all the way inside. And if you were to put down $100 to fill up your car, and they gave you no change because the pump maxed out at 100 and quit, you would be ready to string up a politician, wouldn't you? I mean, the people would be out with pitchforks, and 
because there's no because there's, that's a lot of friction. The brain is going hello, hello, hello. This crap just got expensive. Hello, hello, hello. Mm. And and there's none of that. None of those alarms are going off in our nervous system at all when we do frictionless purchases. So start out and make it difficult. I'll give you a, a even more pandemic, a more uh, a primitive version of that. When you first start, break your food budget into two categories: restaurants and groceries. So you don't accidentally spend your grocery money at the restaurant. It will make you limit your restaurant purchases, and you'll start realizing that 80% of what you spend at a restaurant is entertainment. Only 20% is actual food. And you'll realize that when you separate them. When you put it all in one food budget, then you can rationalize your butt off and just go out to eat all the time and go, oh, my food budget, I don't have enough for groceries. must be Biden's fault. You know, no, it's your fault. But separating them gives you friction in that category and causes you to realize you're spending. So it's a very important discussion. We are in such a convenience culture. Uh, and one thing that could help us get back on track with our finances is making it more inconvenient on purpose. At least until you get a new habit pattern. I use a debit card at the pump. I don't walk inside, but I don't need to worry about it. Sharon said last night, she goes, or at the lake, I was going to go fill her car up. And she goes, well, how much is gas over there? And I'm like, how much? I don't know. I love that Sharon's concerned. I don't know. You have enough money. It's okay. Are, is she you, saying, hey, go to this other station. It's 10 cents cheaper. She wants me. To, and I'm like, she goes, well, I go to Costco at home. And I'm going, and how long do you sit in line? She goes, well, I know what time of day to go to where there's no line. And I'm Woman like, well, after my own heart. This is this is why you're sharing freaking Ramsey and I'm not. So She's a legend. Go. It's your legendary. That's how she keeps so, her but I mean, that's uh, You know, I do not. I'm not concerned about gas prices anymore. That's not arrogant. I'm not out of touch with the public. I'm just not worried about it anymore. I lived like no one else. Now I buy gas wherever the flip I want. I don't think anything about it, right? So I got the room, right? So there you go. And that's what you're after But at the end. But in the beginning, every coupon, every detail, everything, until we got our brains reset permanently in the common sense groove. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y-Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y-Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Kyle and Tiffany are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, way better than we deserve. I love it. Where do you guys live? Dayton, Ohio. All right, cool. How much debt have you paid off? We paid off $157,000. All right. How long did that take? Nine and a half years. All right. One fifty-seven and nine and a half. What was your income during that time? It was a range of twenty to 50000 and we just barely made it to that 50000 recently. Wow. What do you all do for a living? 
I am a pharmacy tech and an IT coordinator for a children's hospital in Dayton. Mm -hmm. I've nannied over the course of this journey, and I had an in-home bakery. Now I get to stay home with our boys. All right. Very good. So nine and a half years, 157000 with a $50,000 topped income. Is that your house? That is house and a car payment as well as a little bit of school. You're 100% debt free. That's right. Wow. I'm looking at weird people. <laughs> How old are you, weird people? We are 31. 31 years old with a paid for house, yep. making 50 grand. What's the house worth? Oh, now it's worth uh, almost 250,000. When we bought it, it was 114. Got to love it. Yeah. Got to love it. Well done, y'all. That's pretty cool. I mean, you're the little train that could. Yep. You just kept at it and kept at it and kept at it. And I will say the price, the it went up in value not just because of the market recently, but we also cash flowed probably forty, fifty thousand worth yeah. of improvements on the home as well as other things uh, throughout this journey as well. So we yeah. did all that as well as cash flowing uh, a lot of different projects. Good for you guys. So how long have y'all been married? Ten years. We just celebrated this month. All right. So as soon as you got married, you start. Yeah. So how does how explain how that happens? Funny story. I was actually forced to do FPU against my will. I drug him Gosh. in. He didn't want to do it, but we listened. You to were forced against your will. Then you drug him against his will. <laughs> Who was doing all this dragging? It gets worse. We listened to you the whole way to our honeymoon. That's that's sad. <laughs> that's where it started. We had a that's nine really hour sad. drive to the honeymoon, and we said, let's throw on some of these CDs, and we just blasted it the whole way. We that's got, after you both got drug in. Yeah. So yeah. how did you get CD drugged? Yeah. yeah. Who drug? Who did the dragon? <laughs> My sister did. Your sister drug you in. You weren't married yet. No. Mm-hmm. And then you said, "Okay, you're coming too." Yep. If I got to do this, you got to do it. <laughs> as soon as she said yes, she said, now I can start talking to this guy about finances a little bit more seriously. And so she started pushing it towards me. And all she did was ask me to track my eating out budget for one month. And that changed my mind real quick. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, that was inside. That was a good way to kind of yeah, just get him on the hook. Yeah. Yeah. We came home after the honeymoon and started killing it. Just after that, boom. Yep. We're getting knock, going to knock out the car and get the house knocked out, too. Yeah, we knew it was going to be a long journey with income like that, but we mm-hmm. knew it was going to be worth it. Well, wow. you did. You, you set a goal and stuck with it. That's pretty yeah. impressive. I'm just impressed you stuck with changing the CDs out to get through all the <laughs> lessons. It's very impressive. <laughs> that was a lot. We had the whole big box in the back of the car the whole time. <laughs> wow. So how do you stick with it for nine and a half years? Most people, if they're 21 years old, they're going... I can't do anything. 10 years? Are you kidding me? I'll find another one. I'll be 31. I'll be ancient. (laughs) Uh, Well, to be fair, when we first started it, we had the plan to pay the house off in six years. That was going to be it. We had it all planned out. Um, We got to the point in our mid-20s where we really sat down and talked about it and said, you know, we want to do this. We want to knock this out and create a good uh, future for our children. But we've got to have those children. So we decided to reallocate some money elsewhere and and start to work on our family. Now we've got two beautiful little boys. Um, But even through all that, we just barely slowed down a little bit and just killed it as much as possible. So we added three years on, but we got two perfect boys out of it. And I think what carried us through that 10 years was teaching FPU there for about three years. And also just like you said, the little engine that could, that's kind of what I said last night. That's what got us through. We had that goal and we did not stop. Mm -hmm. And if he got weak, I was strong. And if I got weak, he said, no, we have a goal. And we stuck Mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. We knew the future that was coming, uh, whether we did or whether we didn't. So we wanted to uh, see the one where we are debt-free. Well, thanks for coordinating Financial Peace University classes. That does have the benefit of you have to do it because if you don't, you're a hypocrite then. Mm -hmm. You know, and most humans just can't do that. They have to. It makes you more accountable if you're teaching it. It's strange. You get get more hardcore teaching it. Yeah, we had five students over that time come to us this year and say, we did it. We paid off our student loan. We we're wow. so happy to hear that for them. I love we kind of built their own little community. Yeah. Well, you that's what ends up happening. There's because there's a shared pain, a shared victory, a shared goal and that makes permanent ties. Yeah. Lifetime friends many times. And yeah. you can't yeah. talk to a lot of people about this stuff cuz they get weird, they'll shame you, they go, well, "I have student loans, you're trying to judge me." And you guys have created this amazing community of people who want to get better with money and aren't scared to talk about it. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because I would have to say, yes, I am judging you. No, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I've said that a few times. That's why we, Dave couldn't I'm, coordinate classes yeah, anymore. It's, it's too yeah. awkward. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm judging you. Yes, I am. You, that's kind of what I do for a living. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Way to go, guys. I'm so proud of you. I, your sister that brought you to the FPU class has got to be bouncing off the walls. <laughs> That's got to be neat. Yeah. She Did she keep with it, too? Yeah. All right. Got the whole family going. Yeah. I love it. Way to go, you guys. Way to go. Very, very proud of you. How does it feel? 31 <laughs> years old. 
It's amazing. Two little boys not have any payments in the world. Yeah. The freedom is unreal. It, it took us months to uh, to really let it all settle in, just every day looking at each other and just smiling and knowing we're debt-free. We don't have to worry about our children struggling with this or seeing mom and dad going through the stresses of finances anymore. And uh, it's just, it's so great to wake up every day and know that you don't have to put that on your children anymore. Amen. It's crazy. Our oldest this summer, he's he was there. He went to the bank with us. He helped us sign the last check. He helped How us. How old is he? He's six. Uh, he'll, he'll remember it then. He oh, set yeah. up a homemade ice cream and lemonade stand this summer. He did it twice and he made 850 bucks. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> I'm franchising that. <laughs> wow. Yep. That's impressive. They That's catch incredible. it. Incredible. They catch on. They really do. And yep. when you change your family tree, you do more than just change the math. Yep. Everything's changed in the spirit. Everything's changed in their character. And that six-year-old will remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He'll tell his grandkids, yeah, I was there the day mom and dad paid that off. Yeah, I remember back in the day. We had these things called banks. Yeah, that's what will happen. There's we, a we, piece we, of we paper called a check. check. <laughs> I mean, tell you what yes. a check is, son. Yeah, that's that's what will happen. You changed it. I mean, this whole thing's going to be new. That's the old man sitting there as a multimillionaire. That's pretty cool. Well done, you guys. Thank you. Hey, we got Baby Steps Millionaires, the book for you. That's where you're headed for sure. Total Money Makeover to give away to one of your class participants and another uh, membership to Financial Peace University. You can give that away and get somebody in one of your classes. You guys keep teaching, keep leading. Way to go. Thank you so much. We're so proud of you, heroes. Well done. Very well done. All right, bring the kiddos in. Let's introduce them and hear their ages. All right, what's six-year-old's name? This is Ryan. Ryan, the $800 ice cream man. Way to go, Ryan. And? This is Bradley. Bradley is how old? Uh, He's just about to be two. All right, way to go, Bradley. Well done. What do you all tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Finding contentment. Knowing that you don't have to have what everyone else has, and you can find joy in the life that you've built and sticking to that goal. Be I'm kind of looking at a picture that looks like contentment. I'm about to cry right this now. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is well done. Y'all. You got way more than they have because you got yeah. financial peace, my man. Way to go. Very, very cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Kyle and Tiffany, Ryan and Bradley, Dayton, Ohio, 157000 paid off car and house. They're officially weird people. Nine and a half years it took them making twenty to $50,000. they are 31 years old. Mm-hmm old 100 percent debt free house and everything hear me people this can be done these guys are dropping a mic on you right now you gotta love it count it down guys let's hear a debt free scream ready three two one we're debt free yeah Yeah! that is how it's done you know what's weird i didn't hear one complaint gripe excuse i mean they could have blamed everyone and everything as to why they're not where they need to be financially and they just decided nah we're gonna do this anyways you don't hear that from people who are victors you hear that from people that are victims Mm. yeah when you're a victor you don't need you know excuses are of the past you got to put those in the rearview mirror we're doing it anyway i know but we're doing it anyway i know but we're doing it anyway i know but we're gonna do it Anyway, mm. this is how they think. This That's how un- people like unstoppable that at that point. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful family. I love it. Yes, this is why I come down here every day. This is the Ramsey Show. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more.
George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Christopher is in Bangor, Maine. Hi, Christopher. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how are you guys? Great, man. What's up? So I have a question. Um, first of all, I'm about 25 years old. I'm 25. I have no debt. And I have about 13000 in a brokerage fund in a total stock market 500 index. I also have 15400 in savings. And I just opened a Roth IRA with about 1200 in it. And because I don't own a house and I have no debt, I feel like I can invest more than just maxing out my Roth IRA. So my first question is, do you think that I should take the tax up front and take my money out of my brokerage to put it in the Roth, or if I should keep it in, say, save for a house, and also what I can do with extra income, um, how I can invest that? What's your income? Um, right now, it's a little sporadic. I'm a deckhand on a boat. It could be anywhere from two to two grand to 3500 a month. What do you make in a year? Um, say with this, maybe 30 or so. Okay, so you're making 30000 a year. Are you living on the boat? No, no, I live in uh, my own uh, housing. Okay. All right, so what was the purpose of the brokerage account? What was your goal with that? Um, so that was actually something that my father set up for me when I was 18, and, of course, I didn't really understand it. Um and so for a little while, I was just funding it until I kind of realized, hey, I need to understand what's going on without just blindly funding an account. That's smart. That's good to be understanding what you're putting money into and why. And so that's that's the heart of my question is figuring out what are your next goals. You have no debt. Uh, you have some money in savings. That's good. That's We're going to call that your emergency fund. And so your next step would, de- would be to invest 15% of your income into those tax advantage retirement accounts. Okay. So I'm not seeing a need to to fire sale, uh, liquidate the brokerage immediately. You could use your future income to fully fund that Roth. Uh, Even then, do you have any other ways to increase your income long term? Um, can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. I think you're a pretty frugal dude. You live pretty low because you're living you're living well under a thirty thousand dollar income and still saving money. It's impressive. So, I mean, yeah. normally I talk to somebody like you, they call me up with a credit card debt, a car payment and everything else. And you've managed to stay away from all that. Congratulations. Well done. So 15% of 30,000 would be 8,000. Okay. Okay. It'd be 9,000, but you could fully fund your 8,000 Roth, right? So fully fund your Roth out of your income. You can sit down with a Smart Vester Pro if you want to click uh, smart Vester at RamseySolutions.com. That'll tell you who we recommend in your area. They can set it up where monthly you put into a Roth and you fully fund it once. You can fully fund it over time. I don't think you have to cash out the brokerage to fund it. I think you can fund it out of your income this coming year at 25. If you'll do this from 25 to 65, you'll have plenty of money. You'll be a multimillionaire. If you save 15% of your income from 25 to 65, you'll be a multimillionaire. Okay. If you don't do anything else but that, and uh, even at making thirty grand, so if you fully fund a Roth, you'll be a multimillionaire um, at, at uh, sixty-five. So we that, talked to a seventy-year-old who never made more than fifty-five, and he's got six million bucks. Yeah, so yeah. it can be done. That's exactly right. And you know, by the way, folks, Washington Post is reporting uh, Fidelity, uh, the mutual fund family, is saying that four hundred one k millionaire club grew thanks to a stock market rally. Um, George, read over this. This is good. This is pretty wild. So new data from Fidelity found the number of employees with 401k balances over $1 million spiked 26% in the second quarter. So now there's 378,000 of those accounts compared to under 300,000 by the end of 2022. And the average balance in these 401ks was $1.5 million. And here's the key. They stuck to it. These are people who contributed steadily to their plans, even when the stock market took a heart-clutching dive. It says they've seen that payoff in their account balances. And this is something that, you know, we've been preaching. You've been preaching it for 30 years now. But just stay on the roller coaster and you won't get hurt. Well, and here's the thing. You know, when the news reports that the stock market is up, never. Did you guys know the stock market's up since the first of the year, 15%? If you put in $10,000... 
or $5,000 or $1,000, 500 million, whatever, at the first of the year, you would have made 15% on your money in an S&P 500, which is a stock market index, right? It's measuring the growth of the stock market and made 15% on your money. But, you know, the news is inflation's 9.6%. There's supply chain problems and Hillary, the hurricane, not the woman hit California. I mean, this is it. That's a right? good caveat. Yeah, we need to be the hurricane, clear. Not with the woman. No emails were deleted in this message, but yeah. So the um, wow, I mean, this is encouraging. Fifteen percent in one year, you, you know, from the first January one to today. Have you heard a single news report telling you this? Well, I got to give it to the Washington Post. Fidelity reporting Millionaire Club is up. Right, the number of workers with a million dollars or more in their four hundred one ks hit an all time. Hi. Wow. And this the year. Eeyores are still out there, Dave. You know what the new line is now? Well, a million dollars isn't enough anymore, Dave. It's more than you got, whiner. <laughs> that one's my favorite. Won't yeah. get you as far as it used to. It won't. It'll get you further than you are. But these people aren't retired you're yet. whining. And they've got $1.5 million. They're still on the journey. Yeah, and here's what the interesting thing is. You run all these formulas and theories and stuff. I was meeting with the Every Dollar team the other day, and they're working out a, a formula for a retirement calculator we're going to build into that thing. And um, I was just, just don't do it like the financial industry, because the financial industry runs a bunch of hypothetical crap that never actually occurs. What actually really occurs? See, if, all, if I give you some examples, I can say, for example, okay, if you invest $100 a month, from age 25 to age 65, in a decent growth stock mutual fund that averaged 12%, you'd have 1172000 That's an example. Well, $1,172,000 is not enough, and you didn't inflation adjust that. And, and, and you know, is that CGR? What, you need to have, what kind of math? What kind of freaking nerd cares? You got a million dollars more than your dad, who had nothing. Shut your butt up and save money. Hello. This is the point. So quit trying to – our purpose here is to get you to actually do this stuff, not run theoretical think tanks. The doing it is the big difference. You know, most of the people we interviewed that made me had a million dollars, they they can't tell you what a CGR is. They didn't sw- sit and wring their little nerd analytical hands over whether – Oh, do we? What kind of inflation rate do we use? Because in the last ten years prior to Biden, it was two point six percent. Do we use a post Biden inflation rate or a pre Biden inflation rate, or do we go back seventy two years since the CPI started and it's four point two percent? What do we do with our? Good God! You sound just like. Would you like just a... shut up and put some money in your account? You haven't even mentioned expense ratios yet, Dave. I left those out too, and twelve B one fees. Like I don't oh know they're gosh. there. Because I don't care if they're there. Well, the people the that invest this. are the ones that have money. The ones that don't invest because they get paralysis of the freaking analysis don't do anything. They have no money. So that's the beauty of this young man, Brent. Oh, yeah. See, he didn't need a he, – he's working on a, on a boat. He's working on a boat in Maine. Hello, making 30000 He's going to be a multimillionaire because George told him how to do it. And he's going to actually go do it. And he he's not trying he, to impress his friends with a giant car payment. And, and well, and he, he didn't he didn't need some kind of hypothetical, you know, nineteen variable adjusted rationalization to learn to be an investor. He thought, you know, my dad got me started with this. It's probably a good idea that I do some more of it. Well, way to go, Brent. You got something called common sense. They got it in Maine. They got it in Tennessee. And they got it in a few of the other states out there. You can look around, you'll find them. Get you some. Oh, my gosh. But the Get study you some. found that the average investor in this millionaire study, they were just average. They weren't prodigies. They weren't doing anything fancy. And I'll guarantee you, they don't even know what a 12B1 fee is. And this article ends with this. The majority of savers stayed the course and did not make significant changes to their retirement savings. Oh, you mean they didn't time the market? You mean they didn't worry about the dollar being sniper shot by a new, a whole new currency coming out of it? China and Brazil, we're all going to hell. I'm taking my money out right now. No, they just kept investing, just merrily along. Stop touching it. Merrily, merrily, merrily along. This is The Ramsey Show.
Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods of moving and storage studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He is the co-host of Smart Money Happy Hour, one of our more popular podcasts on the old Ramsey Network. Check it out. He and Rachel have a lot of fun on that show, and they even give you some information that's useful. So try it out. You'll like both of them. And uh, also the George Campbell with a K YouTube program is uh, exploding. Yeah, faster than even we imagined, and we knew he was a star. So check it out. He's uh, my co-host today. Phone number here, 888-825-5225. Bob is in Boston. Hey, Bob, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, George. Hope you both are well. We are, sir. Um, How can we help? Looking for some guidance today. So so after following your baby steps for many years and our kids are through college at this point, my wife and I are aligned on, on wanting to purchase a second home. Where it gets a little complex for me is uh, she's talking about a sum that I'm <laughs> not necessarily comfortable with. Uh, and I am looking to slow down in a couple of years. I'll probably work part time in a couple, uh, within a couple of years or so. So I, I need help. You know, I want, I want to please her. I want to do the right thing by her. Um, but I think I need some help getting comfortable with the kind of numbers that she's talking about. Okay. Uh, what do you make? Um, I make just under seven hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. What's your net worth? About eight million dollars. Okay. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm in finance. Way to go, Bob! Well done, man. You are impressive. That's a very cool thing. I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank what you. is she wanting to spend on this home? She's talking about something like two and a half million dollars, which is What's your current residence worth? Uh, about five hundred thousand dollars. Your current residence is worth five hundred thousand. Yes. And your second home will be two and a half million. Well, that's a little out of whack. Where's I, the second I home? I hear you. Okay. Would, uh, well, number one. Okay. Here, here's okay. my rule of thumb on second homes. They're, they're. I, I've got. I've got them. Okay. They're toys. And so they need to be a uh, number one. You got to pay cash for them, or you don't do them. Uh, you're asking the Ramseys, so you're in finance. You're obviously have done very well. You're going to do what you're going to do. But this is my rule: I would never do it unless you paid cash. Number one. Number two. They're toys, meaning they don't produce an income. It's not a great category of real estate to invest in because resort real estate is the only type of real estate that's more volatile than being a developer. These are the two places you can lose your butt the most in real estate. So, for instance, I've got a lake house. One year, it's worth uh, $2 million. One year, it's worth $4 million. And then the next year, it's worth $2 million again. Just, to, I mean, they come and, it comes and goes and comes and goes and comes and goes. You follow me? So um, then the, the second rule on toys lake houses, um, second homes, whatever we want to call them here, is that if they're not going to be income producing, uh, and, and so it needs to be a small enough percentage of my net worth that we could stomach it if we lost it. Mm. Because you're taking this much money offline, it's no longer earning any money. Uh, it will appreciate in value over time, probably, most likely. But that's not why we're buying it. It's not an income producing asset. It's, you know, it's, it's a capital gains asset. So, um, you know, if you're buying it to speculate on, then don't buy it uh, because you're buying it for a second home. My lake house is not for sale. It will be sold someday after I'm gone. 
but it's not for sale um, for any price. I keep up with values just because I'm a real estate nerd, but it's not for sale. And so that's what you're doing here is you're taking that much money offline. And that feels like a large chunk offline out of $8 million to me. Mm. That's the way I feel, too. Um, I, I was I, thinking I think a million, think and I was going to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. That is makes, there some compromise here? Number. Or is she dead set? It's got to oh, be yeah. this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. There, there would definitely be compromise there. I, I, th- I think her view is, hey, listen, we're not getting any younger. We have this we have this pot of money. We've always lived below our means. If we're going to do it, let's do it. And yeah. let's, let's just go for it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. that'd be 12% of your net worth is tied up in a toy and that's that's pretty heavy but that's doable um for me i i you know at a million out of eight million right and the good news is how old are you 52 okay so how much longer are you gonna work making 750 two to three years okay and um and then you're gonna be living out of your net worth yes yeah and so um you're going to slow its growth because right now its growth is compounding. Right. So you're going to be spending some of that to live because you're used to a decent lifestyle, I would assume, making 750. And and you shouldn't be denied that. I'm okay with that. I mean, so, yeah, that that's another, because I, I think the description to her, if this was me talking to Sharon, I'd say, honey, what that means is we're going to have to, it would trim our monthly income down because we're taking a chunk, uh, we're taking a third of our a fourth of a third of our uh, net worth offline. It's no longer creating income for us, and so and I'm uncomfortable with that number for that reason because I want to keep our income steady so we don't have to think about we can do anything we want to do with a good income. Because I mean, if you got seven million working for you, you can still make six seven hundred thousand dollars a year off of that, right? Right. And, That's right. Yeah, and, and so in perpetuation, I can. I bet you can. And so um, that that's that's what I want to set up for you. So I think that's the way you talk to her about it is I don't want to cut that six or seven hundred thousand to four or five hundred thousand because we got so much tied up in a second home. I think that makes uh, a lot of sense, and I like I like that approach. I think she I think she'll be open to that. Yeah. Um, so well, all she did, she just saw something she liked, and she knows you've worked your butt off, and she wants to enjoy it before it's gone. Yeah, I, I go along with her on that. You live like no one else, so later you can live and give like no one else. That puts us on her team, right, until we look at the ratios, and the ratios are bothersome. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate your guidance here. I, I value your opinion. So uh, thank you both very much. Oh, you're an incredible, incredible dude. It's well a done. great problem. I'm sitting back here going, this is a real problem. Don't get me wrong. But this is a great problem to have. This is the problem you have if you follow our advice. If you do the stuff we teach, you're 32 years old and you work the baby steps, you're Bob at 52 or 62, struggling with how much, whether to put the 1 million, million or, the two, or million. 2 million into your second home. Hello. This is the, but you notice what he's living in a half a million. Mm. He's not living in an $8 million house making 700,000. Notice Big that. difference. Hollywood. Notice that. This is The Ramsey Show. Dr. John Deloney has a brand new book coming out called Building a Non-Anxious Life. If you pre-order today, you'll get $75 in free bonus items. Uh, Nearly half the population reports their lives are affected by anxiety, stress, or burnout. It's everywhere. But here's the thing. Anxiety is not the problem. The problem is anxiety is an alarm bell that's going off telling you that we feel unsafe, disconnected, 
unhealthy. Our finances are in turmoil. Our relationships, and that causes anxiety. Anxiety is the symptom. And Dr. John walks you through the six daily choices to recognize and break free from a life that is spinning, spinning, spinning out of control. Yeah. Pre-order it today. Building a non-anxious life. $20 at RamseySolutions.com. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Brent is with us. Brent is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Brent. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. What's up? Yeah, um, I am currently in baby step two with my wife. We just found you guys about a month or so ago, and we've been reading the total money, the total money makeover book, and it's really changed my whole life on how I look at money because um, I'm a generation third business owner, not with this business that I'm currently owning, but um, we're currently in baby step two, and um, we've had some changes to our business this past fourth quarter. Um, well, fourth, you know, starting in the fourth quarter of last year, and my wife and I are trying to put a budget together personally um, to pay off our debt and everything like that. We have our thousand dollar emergency fund, but trying to come up with the income for me and my business to put towards our budget has been a challenge for my wife and I. And we're just trying to figure out um, how to set the proper income for my business. I try to look at my life and kind of see how much money I need to bring in to take care of our basic needs. But it's been a very challenge because our business has took a step back and it's put more responsibility on me um, to do the actual work before I had technicians, um, you know, doing our work for us. And um, I was able to run it from a, you know, an owner perspective. And uh, it's just been a challenge for me and my wife. And I just wasn't sure um, how you could uh, get a budget number so we can start paying off our debt and baby step two. When we get to end of 2023 and you look at your P&L on the business, what will be your net profit? Uh, we lost money last year. No, 2023. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 2023, we will be lucky to break even. How are you? How are you? Um, Does your wife have a job? Yes, yes. My wife's an in um, house baker, so she owns a bakery and I own an electrical business. Why are you only breaking even? Because I probably took on more um, people last year than I probably should have, and it kind of put us in a situation where I was making sure they were taken care of and not paying myself like I should. There's not paying your. There's a difference between paying yourself and not making a profit. You can make a yeah. big old hairy profit and not take any of it home, leave it in the business. But you're yeah, not making correct. any profit, which means the people that work for you are in danger of losing their job because you're in danger of closing. Correct. And so you're mm-hmm. not doing the people that are there a big favor by not making a profit. It is required of you as a business owner to continue to make a profit to stabilize the business for the good of the team. And that may mean oh, that yeah, some of the absolutely. team needs to leave so the rest of the team gets to survive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we do great work. We're making No, you don't. You I don't mean, make enough make... money to eat. You're True. not making a profit. Yeah, Why are you not making a profit? Cuz you kept too much payroll. That's what you told me. Yeah, too much payroll and I I have a big heart and I try to help people and I guess that it's put myself in a What are you doing I to mean, help people? What do you mean? People, like um I have a I have a heart for the younger generation going into the trade industry. And so I bring on young people and train them. And I've started more businesses than I'm willing to admit. Um, Cause I'm great at being an electrician and I'm great at, you know, I, I've read the book uh, EMS and it really opened my eyes up to being a technician, owning a business. And I'm working on, I'm, I'm following entree leadership to no, be better not. at a lot of areas where I'm struggling. No, 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 I just started. I just started. Okay. You know, um, right. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thank you. Because we teach people yeah. to make a profit there. Um, yeah, yeah. Because you can't yeah, continue. Yeah, you can't continue start. the ministry that your heart is pulling you to. You can't. You you want to serve 
the people on your team and you want to bring people on your team and give them a shot and you want to introduce them to the trades yeah. and you have a heart to yeah. do all of that, you are going to lose the ability to do that because you're trying to run this without making a profit. So you have got to make some gotcha. difficult decisions to be able to continue to do the ministry that you want to do. Gotcha. gotcha. So you can't say, I'm unwilling to tell anyone no or send anyone home for the good of the organization and blame that on a big heart because ultimately your big heart is going to not get anything done. Yeah. I mean, we were doing great until last year and we took a step back and honey, you told me you lost money last year and this year you're going to break even. That's two years. You've made no money. This is not a hobby. It's a business. Sure. You yeah, have to make point. the business decisions to get it profitable. And that means some of your people that you brought on as, as projects need to go home. For the good mm-hmm. of everybody else and for the good of future project people. If you want to help yeah. so-and-so and be a, bring a young person on and, and help them, you know, come out of prison and get them going or whatever it is you want to do, you want to help people and you want to use the business to do that, please, for God's sakes, do that. that. You're the kind of man we want running a business out there. But you have got to say, you got to have make hard decisions to be able to make the good decisions. You can only give well, out of the why. overflow. And right now, you don't have any overflow. Yeah. You're struggling yeah, to make ends absolutely. meet. Your job first is yeah. take care of your family. First. Yeah, and that's what's really opened my eyes by, you know, starting with Entree Leadership and starting with, you know, final, you know Financial Peace University. I've really opened my eyes up that my family need to be the, a major priority, and yeah. that's why, I mean, I have made some decisions lately to turn this around, because, I mean, we do great work. I just got to... I, I don't, I don't, I'm not questioning the quality of your work, Brent. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that... Um, you know, when I first started in business, I thought for here's an example of something that's a little different, but it falls in the same bucket. I thought okay. by not confronting people inside of our organization that were doing things wrong, that I was being nice. Because I'm Southern and being nice is what you do. It's called passive aggressive, right? We're always nice. Mm-hmm. We say, bless your heart. We'll slit your throat and say, bless your heart. We're Southern, oh, but we're God. always nice, <laughs> right? I yeah. always wanted to be yeah. nice. I always wanted to be a nice Christian man. And what I finally yeah. figured out is is that by not confronting people's misbehavior, I was actually allowing the business to be torn apart from the inside. And, and I was staying angry all the time on my drive home at their misbehavior that I had never even told them was misbehavior. It's just completely my yeah. fault. And so we adopted a yeah. new slogan. Here's our new slogan. It's about, it's about 20 years old now. To be unclear is to be unkind. So that's Mm, my version of being nice, but with strength. I'm going to be very clear Mm. because to otherwise is to be unkind. And you're being unkind to the future people that you want to help with this business because you're being too kind, too nice. You're being nice instead of kind. You're being nice to the current people instead of the other. Yeah. And your family is also part of this. And we're trying to get out of debt. And so we need to get our income up. Yeah. So if I'm you, I'm going, I can make 70 grand as an electrician or make zero dollars running this business. You need some money. And so it might be time to reset this business and how it's structured and see if you can get it profitable fast. And if you can't, you probably need to go work for somebody until you can get your act together and get there. Because only the strong can help the weak, sir. You know, starving kids don't feed starving kids. Projects don't help projects. You're now a project. You've turned yourself into one. This is The Ramsey Show.
George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Jason and Kendall are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? We're doing fantastic, Dave. Thanks. Well, honored to have you. Where do you guys live? We are from Waukesha, Wisconsin. All right. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way here to do a debt-free scream, how much did you pay off? $350,784. Love it. How long did this take? Four years, five months, and eight days. Aha, love it. Very good. And your range of income during that four years and five months? Two hundred to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars combined. Very cool. What do y'all do for a living? We're in sales. Uh, I am. Uh, I sell uh, life-saving uh, healthcare equipment. Mm-hmm. And I'm in cybersecurity sales. Ah, very good. Two great businesses. Well done. Good. What kind of debt was the three fifty one? There was a phone. There was a car. A credit card a lake house slash cottage and our home wow look at the weird people a hundred percent free way to go guys uh, thank very you very cool very cool how old are you two i'm 41 mm-hmm. and i'm 38 and what's the house worth we bought it for 300 and it's now worth 450 to 500,000. very wow. cool how much in your retirement savings Eight hundred fifty thousand. Woo! Talking to millionaires with a paid-for house and Lake Cottage. I love it. Mm-hmm. Way to go, you guys. Thank you. And at 41 years old and 38. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Baby Steps Millionaires. Well, tell us the story. What happened four and a half years ago that got all this started and uh, made the whole family go into a tizzy, and now it worked? Well, it started a little bit before that. We, I found the podcast, and I said, Jason, we should listen to this because we were feeling a little out of control, but we listened for like a month, and we're like, ah. We've got it under control. We can pay these credit cards off every month. We're doing fine. And then in November of 2018, Jason was laid off from his job right ahead of the holidays. And we realized we really were a short period of time away from not being able to handle what we had going. Mm. And it scared it scared us so bad that we, we, we decided, okay, let's go back to that podcast we were listening to. Scared straight. Scared yep. straight, yep. And then um, what really solidified it for us is a year later, Jason was laid off again. But at that point... Jason. <laughs> yeah. It was a rough patch. It, it was Merry a Christmas. blessing in disguise, though. Yeah. Like, it, like that, that job that he rushed into that, that in 2018 was... It, it was a great job financially, but terrible emotionally for him. Yeah. So it was a true blessing. And then in 2019, I was able to say, like, let's let's take time. You find a job that you are really going to love, and he's still there today. Mm. So, so yeah, so that's and great. And making bank, too. And yeah. doing yeah. well. Yep. And then in um, April of 2020, we had the opportunity to finish Baby Step 2, and... <laughs> You know, yeah. things were uncertain. Well, we're like, there's some timing. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're like, well, maybe we should just batten down the hatches and, and prepare for a storm. But we just decided to go into the storm and pay off and do baby step two. Be done with it. Love it. Yep. And then to celebrate baby step two, we got a mini golden doodle and we named him Ramsey David. Oh, <laughs> wow. Is it the middle name? Uh-huh. Ramsey David is. Yeah. David's his middle name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dogs yeah. can have middle names. So when, he, just so when he goes in the floor. <laughs> yeah, Ramsey David. David. Yes. David. We, we David. Jo- we That's joke what my that, wife says. Yeah. We joke that he gives terrible financial advice because he's a dog. Um. <laughs> Hey, that dog is debt free. He's doing better than most Americans. <laughs> I'm true. <laughs> yep. And and then from there we pivoted into let's let's pay off the house and how cool would it be to stand here and be fully debt free when we stood it. here. I love it. Wow. Powered on y'all. through. Good for y'all. Very good stuff. This is amazing. So were the girls a part of this journey? I mean, they're old enough. They're like seeing mom and dad go gangbusters on this debt. I mean, was it weird for them? Were they all in? Were they calling you guys out? You, you know what? They always pretend that they don't like it. They've had plenty of uh, podcasts. Uh, they heard too much Dave Ramsey, and they like to talk a lot of smack about it. But yeah, well, anytime- if you're a teenager, you have to have the eye roll down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. see the eye roll. Come on. Let's see it. You can do it. Yeah, you got to have it down. You got to have the eye roll down. That's part uh-huh. of it. They're yeah. Later on in life, they're like, oh, yeah, I actually, I was into that. Oh, I yeah. tried to play it cool, but I liked it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Anytime we, they see a movie where somebody uh, uses a credit card, oh, no. they're like, oh, my gosh. I uh-huh. cannot believe that they, they're in debt. Yeah. <laughs> who, but, who would have thought Brad Pitt did that? But right. They, they've <laughs> they've joined us. We've led five rounds of FP at our wow. church um, at Bridge Church in Waukesha. Waukesha, go Bridge Church. Um, and they've been there 
um, at least come along a few times yeah. to to sit in and you know help with the kids sometimes and and even kind of share their story once in a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. How hard it is being your kid. You know. Yeah, right. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm so proud of you. You're 100% free. Mm -hmm. You're millionaires. You're 40. How's that feel? Dave, it's phenomenal. You know, it's we, we have a true understanding of what you mean when you say financial peace. It, it allows us to to change what our dreams are instead of thinking of how are we going to get out of this, we can think of what are we going to go to, how are we going to get there, and we know that we control our destiny and, and we can actually pl plan on how we're going to do it yeah amen amen so we are leading one of these classes you've obviously got a great example to set in front of them you guys you say we paid off our house we had this we got eight hundred thousand in savings oh my gosh look at this this is where you could be um that's got to be very persuasive for someone in the class that's scared that's hopeless that's beat down that doesn't know if they can do it they can look at you guys and go i think maybe i can yeah, I think when we started doing FPU, I think, you know, I was a little afraid of, you know, how do we share this? Like, how, how, how honest do we get about where we're at and where we're going? And we just decided if we're going to do this, if we're going to give one week a night for nine weeks every single year, we're going to go all in and be very open and upfront with everyone mm. in our class. Mm. Um, and it's really created this cool community that we have where they come up to us and they're like, hey, guess what I did? We just paid off our car or wow. here's what we're going to do next. And then they ask, where are you guys at? We're, we, we're just following along. A lot of them come back to our class and just sit in and we'll then... Um, kind of be the testimony in that yeah. first class to say, yeah. hey, I did this last year and here's where we're at now. Here's what a year can do. Oh, wow. It's really neat. That's powerful. Yeah, they need to be coordinators too. Yeah, that's they great. Some, yeah. Are. Some of them are. Yeah, your grandparents. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Way to go, guys. I'm very proud of y'all. Very cool. Very Thank cool. You. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I, I think the key is actually deciding that you're going to do it not just thinking i wish i was able to do it i wish i was debt free deciding that you're going to do it and you're willing to sacrifice what it takes to get there mm. yeah and start if you haven't started start today because i mean we started when the girls were like nine and seven and you know a lot of i felt like a lot of people told us like you're going to miss out on these core years that you could be taking them places or you know doing things with them or giving them things and now we're here and we get to just like, and they seem it. they seem fairly well adjusted Very, yeah i mean for teenagers <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> you didn't you didn't kill them after all <laughs> who knew who knew yep. yeah way to go guys very proud of y'all hey we got a baby steps millionaires book to celebrate the fact that you are uh we've got a total money makeover book as well that you'll give to somebody financial peace university membership you can give that to someone you've obviously done a lot of good thank you for leading the classes and for being this huge example for the uh for the audience out there thank you so much very cool heroes very cool and uh, we, we've uh, poked at the girls and, and teenage girls and all that stuff for a minute here. But the truth is that when they look back years from now, they'll realize how big a hero their mom and dad are. And uh, you guys have changed your family tree. You really have. It's pretty impressive what you've done. Very, very cool. Jason and Kendall, Addison and Amelia from Wisconsin. 351000 paid off. House and everything. On the way to being Baby Steps millionaires at 41 and 38 years old. Four and a half years, it, or four years, five months it took to do that. Making two hundred to three fifty through job changes and everything else. They persevered 100% debt free count it down let's hear a debt free scream three two one we're debt free yeah. Yeah. i love it well done you guys very well done this is the ramsey show
Our scripture of the day, Colossians 4, 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. C.S. Lewis said, there are only two kinds of people, those who say to God, thy will be done, and those who, to whom God says, all right, then have it your way. Mm. I like that. That's a new verse for me. I like that. Your conversation is seasoned with salt. You've been known to be salty. That's in been, conversation. It's been, it's, been ha- it's been happening more lately. <laughs> so you're doing well. Shannon is in Virginia, Roanoke to be precise. Hi, Shannon. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. What's up? Okay. So I'm just kind of like, I've heard about you before, like when I was younger and in my 20s. I'm 45 at the moment. Um, and so I'm just kind of like rediscovering you. I've started listening to uh, Budget Crush and Mama on TikTok. And so I try to get her live every morning. And she just talked about how her and her husband have knocked out all this debt in like 18 months. And so I don't, I mean, I have quite a bit of debt as far as like my car and student loans and stuff go. But as far as like credit cards and stuff, I don't really have a lot of debt. But I was raised by my mother, who was a single mom, but she, I didn't know when I was younger, but as I got older, just figuring out that that's pretty much how she raised us was on credit cards. And I have kind of continued the same cycle, but not so much as far as credit cards, because I've never really had my life together enough to qualify for the amount of credit cards that she has, which is probably a good thing. Um, but I also have not like saved any money. I, I have. Uh, How can we best one. help you today, Shannon? I don't know where to begin, so to speak. Um, I okay. kind of understand the gist of it, but I don't. I don't know. I'm just kind of looking for some kind of guidance as far as sure. structure goes. Well, I'll, I'll say this: uh, the best time to plant the tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Yeah. And so I, you got to just put the past behind you and go, whatever my mom did, whatever happened in the past, it's over. I've got, I'm going to start to chart a new path for Shannon and change yeah. the family tree and break those generational curses. So the answer is not, how do I have less credit card debt than my parents? The answer is, how do I put myself in such a financial position that I can just stop talking about money and worrying about money? And so that's the right. goal. If we have that as the common ground here, we're off to a good start. The next step is to filter this through the Ramsey baby steps. So you said you're new to this. So I'll run you through them real quick, and then I'm going to gift you something that will go in depth on this. Okay? Okay. Thank you. So the first step, and the reason this works is because it's one focus step at a time. We're not doing 17 things at once and trying to keep up with a bunch of debt. So baby step one is a $1,000 starter emergency fund. Do you have $1,000 in cash in the bank account? Uh, no, I have, I started a business in October too. And that's been my main scariest thing is that I'm afraid of running it into the ground by the amount of money that I'm making. And it will, I guess, continue to just grow. So what, what is your income? Um, as far as my business goes, it kind of fluctuates, but I started a house cleaning business and it averages, um, somewhere around 72 to 74, but it has gone Mostly, it's over seven thousand. I mean, over eight thousand, closer up to nine thousand every month. Every Pro- month, profit. That is just like see, and that I don't have anything. <laughs> I'm just like transferring money as I need it. I, so where is I this nine thousand going every month? I I couldn't tell you. That's my problem. Okay, I'm just like that's mindless. Does your business? And I, does yeah. your wait, Does your business have any expenses? <laughs> well, I mean, I buy like. The uh, vacuum cleaners. When I first started, I got them on. Um, I think it is a firm, so I'm making payments on those, and I would like to pay them off. Um, my like cleaning supplies and stuff like that. That's really not that much money. It's not nine thousand dollars worth of expenses. So, right. and then I do pay. My daughter works with me as well. I do pay her um, an hourly, but it's only hourly while we're you're, at the you're, job. You're, so you're cleaning. Uh, your business is cleaning? House cleaning, yes. Okay, cleaning. okay. And you've got two vacuums on payments? Yeah. Okay. All right. But and other that, than that, you've not, you don't have a ton of expenses, so a lot of this money is no. free and clear for you to live on. Okay. Yeah. So, I think that if I can figure out how to get to where I can, like, I feel like I've dug myself in a hole to where I 
have slowly tried to get out over the last couple of weeks, and I have done better this week, but I need to figure out how I can, like, just pay myself weekly or whatever instead of, I need $100 in my checking account. Let me transfer it over. Well, that's where the budget comes in. You said you're watching budgeting videos and you're wanting to get into this. So I'm going to gift you one year of every dollar premium to help you out with this. And it's going to help you make, uh, give every single dollar a job because you've got plenty of money. It's just disappearing Mm -hmm. because you're giving it to lenders. And who knows where I'll eat now. I don't know what your lifestyle is like, but we've got to get all of this in check and start to go, we're paying myself first. I'm going to pay these debts. I'm going to put extra on the debt. I'm going to live off nothing so I can get myself in a good financial position. How much is the total debt that you have? Um, My personal debt is Somewhere around forty thousand, maybe not quite that high, but my student loans are twenty thousand. Last time I looked at it, it was like thirty eight ish, thirty nine ish. Um, so my student loans are like twenty thousand. My car is fourteen something, just over fourteen thousand. Um, and then I have a few little credit cards. Uh, probably somewhere around the five thousand ish dollar mark. Okay. Well, starting then, today, if you want to build wealth. A foolproof way is to just stop going into debt. And that means we're cutting up the cards. We're not going to do these buy now, pay later plans. If we don't have the cash to do it, we just don't do it. Okay. Yeah, you're going to affirm okay. to never do affirm again. Right. <laughs> so the next thing you do is you list out the debts from smallest to largest mm-hmm. balance. Don't even look at the interest rate. Smallest to largest balance, attack the little one with a vengeance, with all the margin you can muster up from that 9000 a month. And that's going to get rid of that first okay. debt really quickly. Agreed? Agreed. And you free up a little payment there, don't you? So now you can throw all of that towards the next debt. That's the debt snowball. You pick up snow as you go. That's baby step two. And so you can do this. If you put them in order, baby step one, then baby step two, then we're going to get you an emergency fund so you never have to turn to debt again. See how that works? When you have six months of expenses in the bank, you don't need lenders anymore, do you? No. Okay, Shannon, um, just in listening to you, um, you are a, a, a smart person. You're smart enough to do better than you're doing because you're living with a a fair amount of chaos, not much order. There's not much order. No, no. Yeah, disorganization and chaos adds a lot of stress to your life. So one of the things you can do here is to um, pretend that I was going to pay you $100,000 a year and you just went to work for me. And knowing what you know today about money, which is not much. Okay. You're just getting started. You're just starting your journey. But even with what you know today, you are a smart person. You're articulate. If I said, I'm going to hire you for a hundred thousand dollars. The first thing I want you to do is go, I got this lady that's got in the cleaning business over here. She's disorganized. I want you to go over there and get her organized. You could do that. You could get her organized because you're smart enough to do it. Your problem (laughs) is you get so emotionally stuck in all these different things and it's flying at you and you, you need to, I want you to pan back and step above this and look at it as if you're managing someone else's stuff okay emotionally step aside like an out-of-body experience okay and say all right i just got hired to straighten up this woman's finances and she's a mess the first thing i'm gonna do is make a really good detailed list of all my monthly bills the second thing i'm gonna do is make a really good detailed list of all these debts the third thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open a set you got a separate checking account for your business yes i did start everything right i kind of did it backwards but i do have everything separated now. okay good yeah. and so now when you move money out of that business you understand you need to set tax money aside right right yeah. so you don't get caught in taxes because that irs is going to yeah pound your head next year if you don't do that so you hang on and george is going to get you set up with every dollar premium the uh, folks in the booth will take care of that for you you're smart enough to do this you got to get yourself organized remove the chaos add order and follow these steps we'll show you how to do it you can do this that puts us hour of the ramsey show in the books we'll be back with you before you know it in the meantime remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace and that's to walk daily with the prince of peace Christ Jesus.
Hey, it's George Camel. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.